Hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the heating CFM for furnace or air handler. All right, all right, let's get into it. So to begin with, what we have is the heat load calculation. So we're going to put that in pink. We'll see here. There we go. So the heat load is 34,949 uh, 34, BTUs per hour. So I need to emphasize this, and this is very interesting, because when we are sizing an equipment and we're doing this for residential purposes, we actually have two CFMs, and I'm, I'm going to do that in yellow. So we have a heating CFM. We're going to put in here heating. All right. Heating CFM. And then we're going to have a cooling CFM. Cooling CFM. Right? So what happens is that cooling CFM is usually bigger. So everything is based on the heat load calculations that we, uh, we do for every house. For example, for this case, we have both and we will always have both heating CFM and cooling CFM. Most often and always almost, we have that the cooling CFM is always greater than the heating CFM. Okay? And that's why when we're sizing an equipment, this could all this could be a furnace. See a furnace, furnace. This could be a, an air handler, an air handler, an air handler. So when we're sizing an equipment, we need to make sure that the furnace and the air handler are going to comply with the CFM required. So what would be the design CFM? So what takes priority based on the CFM purposes? The one that takes priority is actually the cooling CFM. And what's the reason the cooling CFM? Because generally, and uh, of course, always, the cooling CFM is greater than the, C than the heating CFM, okay? So let's do the calculation of the heating CFM required by the, for this house. This house gave us a, this heat load calculate, this heat loss, okay? So the way we calculate the CFM is based on the sensible heat, because let's remember, when we're performing heating, the only load that we have, the only heat we have is sensible. We don't take care of the latent heat. So when we're talking about total heat, we have two, sensible and latent. Latent. So for cooling, we, t we, we consider the latent heat and also sensible. But for heating, we're only going to consider the sensible, all right? So the formula is the following. So this is, since we know already the sensible heat, we're going to say that the Q equals uh, 1.08 times CFM, okay, times delta T. There we go. That's all. All right. So we have the sensible heat, actually, because that's the only heat we're considering here. We're, we're going to put that dead heat loss. Let's put this in pink. Is the sensible heat. Sensible heat. Sensible heat. Okay, for heating. So what's the sensible heat? The sensible heat is going to be equal to the following, 34,000, 34,949, and that's going to be equal to the 1.08, the constant, and we have other videos to explain where that constant comes from. CFM, of course, for heating, not cooling, times the delta T. What's the delta T? Delta T is the difference between the, let's put in here delta T, outdoor minus the indoor. So this is for delta T. Let's put this in here and this is going to be delta T. Okay. The difference between these two. So what's the difference? Let's do this in here in parentheses, 72 minus 14. And also, let me emphasize on this a little bit better. This 72 is actually, ha this actually has to be 70 degrees. So the indoor design temperature based on ASHRAE uh, 55, um, uh, it's 75, no, 70 degrees for winter. So this should be 70. And for summer is 75 degrees. But the winter indoor design temperature in here is 72 because that depends on the client, that depends on the county, that depend on, depends on the jurisdiction. But as an average, as an overall um, 
guideline, I would say it's 70. Indoor design temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit for winter if you want to do heating uh, calculations. But 72 is because of the client was requesting that. Well, let me add two more, right? All right. So based on that calculation, what, what we're going to have in here is the CFM. If we, if we do the calculation in here, it's going to be equal to 34. 949 divided by 1.08 times delta t. How much is that delta t actually? Let's do this 72 minus, okay, 72 minus 14, and that's going to be 58. That's going to be 58, okay? And also, let's mention that with, let's put that green. They also call that the temperature rise. Let's put temperature 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 rise okay and what happens if it's cooling temperature drop okay so the temperature rise is like uh, 58 degrees so what would be the CFM in this case the CFM and don't forget this is the heating CFM the heating CFM required for that heat load calculation is going to be equal to the following if I do the math that's going to be 558 558 CFM okay that's the answer but also, please consider that the CFM is never alone. The CFM is married. Married with who? With the static pressure. So this CFM always and will always be a comp uh, has, has a company. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, I mean, for the static pressure, external static pressure. What is at which external static pressure? Then we're going to see that 558 CFM... Uh, we add which static pressure that's going to be for the equipment 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 where do we obtain we, with this cfm at the static pressure we we, we get obtain this from the blower data or blower performance data and how do you get that you get that actually from the furnace model so in this case let's take a model in this case, what we did is, um, let's see, we chose this model. Model, uh, let's, we chose GMES 92, and this is a Goodman furnace. Goodman furnace. Goodman furnace. All right. Goodman furnace. So this table is from that from that manufacturer all right so based on that since we have the model number and we have the manufacturer we already have the blower data so based on our calculations the heat in cfm is 558 and now we have to see what is the proper um cfm so now in previous videos we made sure the manual s is compliant manual s is compliant is already checked and we already said that it's a 60k furnace it's uh, okay so based on the 60k furnace we have this okay let's do this in pink we're gonna put this in pink there we go that's the furnace that we selected okay so at what ecstatic pressure so we usually we take into account 0.5 static pressure or also you can also choose 0.7 static pressure and what is the external static pressure A external static pressure is actually the resistance the resistance because of in your path in your longest path you're going to have resistance from the coil from the filters from the supply registers return registers and also balancing damper all right so in this case, based on that resistance, let's take into account this, the CFM at, let's put in here to make it consistent, at 0.7 static pressure, inches or watt of water gauge. They also call it, they, you can also put it 0 0.7 inches of water column however you want to call it so it, 0 0.7 inches of water column in uh, water gauge whichever okay what is what options do i have at that at that um external static pressure we have all these options one two three four so we have the model we have the options we have only 
option A, B, C, D. And usually this comes with deep switches, so usually the technician goes and then they set the deep switches based on low, medium, medium high or high speed. See? So in this case, the technician is going to go over. We need for that heat load calculation 558. So the one that is closest is not 348. Is not seven, is not, is actually this number. We're gonna put that, this number. All right? So our, based on the manufacturer, let's put in here. See, we're gonna put the select design CFM. This was, let's put that the design CFM. Let's put this design CFM or actual CFM. Let's put design CFM. Let's go design CFM. And now it's gonna be equal to. 66.6 6 CFM, and I said that this is married at water static pressure at 0.7 inches of water column or water gauge. So that's the selected CFM that the technician or the engineer has to put in their table so the technician goes over and do that. All right, all right, and well, in other videos, in the next videos, we're going to be talking about the, actually this resistance. That's very, uh, this is an interesting topic. So uh, just waiting that. Also, we're going to be talking about the differences between heating and cooling CFM. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And you, if you did, hit the like button. That helps a lot. And subscribe to the channel. Share. All right. Thank you so much.